Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about a powerful storm system that could be brewing in the coming uh, week. So this thing is not terribly far out. It is going to be a pretty well organized <clears throat> storm system out ahead of it there will be quite a bit of heat so this isn't just you know i'm not going to just talk about the i guess the rain side of this or the thunderstorm aspect i'm also going to talk about the aspects that it kind of indirectly causes which again as i mentioned will be the heat um and of course then obviously the thunderstorms uh, that could be pretty severe again this is still a few days away uh this isn't anything that's going to be hopefully nothing you know uh, r remarkable in the severity of this system but it's definitely a system that caught my eye and i kind of um well i kind of want to talk about it so let's start uh, let's start talking about that right now so first off i have the gfs pulled up right now this is a composite re reflectivity so this is basically what the model thinks the radar <clears throat> will look like at the given time right now we are six hours out do note that we do have a relatively a uh, decently organized system and area of precipitation across southern Canada and the northern United States. We do have the monsoons going off across the southwest and a decent bit of activity. We're unfortunately, <clears throat> across very similar areas that got quite a bit of rain in the past uh, several your, uh, several days, especially, obviously, what comes to mind is Eastern Kentucky, but I'm not talking about this system. Though, again, that, that is definitely noteworthy and notice that if you live across Canada, and especially <clears throat> the big cities of Toronto, maybe, Montreal, Ottawa, you could pick up a little bit of rain, maybe some uh, thunderstorms, showers, but again, nothing uh, too remarkable. I do want to say that one area that I am concerned about is obviously, uh, if you've been watching my other videos, is the heat across the northwest as that moves towards the midwest. That area is still getting pounded today with heat, so that is definitely something I kind of want to bring a note to. Again, you are kind of towards the latter, I guess the ending part of this uh, massive heat wave. Let's just click right there on Moses Lake. Uh, right now it is, I mean, just absolutely very hot, 102. To um, this afternoon, it could get up to 106, 101, but notice that later on, Wednesday, right, 95, so already a little bit better, and then Friday, 88, 89, still staying warm, we can see Sunday warming back up, but nowhere near uh, the 106 that could be uh, today, so, um, you know, that's going to start waning. Another area I'm concerned about is obviously the southwest, there are some uh, really expansive thunderstorms today across areas that really do need rain, but um, I mean, these things are just moving too slow, and obviously, uh, you know, if you have this going on, for way too long of a period. I want to see if I can uh, hide the <clears throat> alerts. Well, I don't know. I probably can. But uh, basically, you can see that they're very slow moving. Sometimes they go one after the other across the same area. And what that does is, well, it causes a lot of your um, ponding and flooding on the roadways. Your, um, not even roadways, just landslides, mudslides, especially in elevated terrain. Notice this is Lake Mead over here, so they are getting a little bit of rain. That is good, but again, um, you know, usually monsoons don't add up too much precipitation, even if it does downpour over the reservoir itself. Um, though definitely um, not, 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 you know, not horrible, and th that could uh, go on for a little bit, but again... Uh, there's areas that are kind of have burn scars and whatnot and that could flow cause water flows and um, You know just flash floods just not not the good not the best thing when you have you know two, two, two to three inches of water falling in a period of uh, an hour or two It would be nice if it was just like a light moderate rain, but unfortunately mother nature isn't always perfect like that If at all it never does what it you know what we want it just does what it does So notice the system that I'm talking about moves in onto the coast um, really in the next few days probably tomorrow already by midday it will be already zooming across southern canada again you can see already a decent area of circulation 995 with the help of uh, southwesterly winds and a high pressure here it is pumping up a lot of warm air see those millibars right there um they continue to tighten so a lot of strong wind and i'm just going to show you that the two minute temperature anomaly here starts getting very very warm as warm air gets pumped up and some of these anomalies again as i mentioned in my previous videos are just um, unpleasantly high, especially for Iowa. Um, this could mean temperatures that are well into the hundreds for some areas. Now, let me stop right there. But again, I want to focus more on that storm. Sorry, I'm jumping around so much, but I do want to kind of again show several sides of the system. So notice there it is. You can see a lot of precipitation getting lifted from the monsoon areas, kind of that, that humidity and high dew points. So a lot of activity starts getting fired off around. Sorry, by the way, if you do hear a creaking, you're, I'm sitting on this uh, <clears throat> chair that's really... Um, pretty creaky so that is that um, <laughs> um i do note that <clears throat> by the time we are uh, late tuesday early wednesday we see thunderstorms <clears throat> erupting across wyoming further west into the front range of the rockies as well but also across south dakota iowa definitely some nasty system um or sorry nasty storms um 
<clears throat> developing. Notice some of these could drag into Wisconsin. And then do note that these two kind of combine. Again, at this point, the southwesterly winds are still very strong. And aside from where the thunderstorms are occurring, where it's cooler, especially to the south here, it's going to be a lot warmer. For the north, again, a bit cooler with that cloud cover and whatnot. But notice the system scurries across um, the southern Canadian plains, prairies, again, eventually getting into Ontario and Quebec. Um, some nasty complexes of storms across the upper Midwest, and potentially then a nasty cold front starts forming across you know, large cities, Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee, maybe even Des Moines, Kansas City. The exact orientation and development of this and timing is still a little bit out, but notice this is late Wednesday into early Thursday. And this thing takes its sweet old time as it passes through the Ohio Valley and then kind of pretty much dissipate so that would be the, the end of it if you will but there's more activity in the future um total rainfall it's a bit uh, obnoxious kind of to show that because uh it's really hard to predict rainfall and exactly where it occurs with a uh, thunderstorm you can see this is where the area that the gfs favors obviously the southwest but also from that cold front as it drags down and across southern canada i do want to focus more maybe on another model called the european and show you what this model <clears throat> shows in terms of that storm system it doesn't have the radar option but it does have average precipitation rate so basically how much it thinks will be falling so this isn't what it thinks the radar will look like this is what it thinks um the this is what it thinks it will kind of in terms of millimeters how much water will be falling at any uh, given three hour interval so notice that's our system right now again moving across canada the monsoons across the southwest you can see here some pretty high values there um and then there's that storm that we're talking about we get those southwesterly winds kind of ahead of it the european takes it a bit quicker still we get some nasty storm complexes nasty a little cold front starts developing and again it could ta be taking its kind of sweet old time over several hours dragging to the south definitely some flash flooding pro probably a, a good occurrence as you know you have thunderstorms along here you get one you get two you get three and maybe a fourth one even you're gonna get some ponding hopefully nothing too terrific these areas haven't been terribly wet though it hasn't been awfully dry either so you're definitely the threat for flash flooding is um it's definitely there and notice that every day the european shows a lot of activity across the southeast the east and especially the southwest in the future but it shows more systems and one that actually is pretty interesting later on into early august so we'll have to watch for that one as well again uh total accumulated precipitation you can see the european does favor well let's just go less further out just to accompany or just encompass the system that Will be occurring again it shows a lot more precip uh further south than what the gfs did but again um it's it's pretty hard to track this and the main threat isn't really again the heavy rainfall um other than uh, obviously the localized instances of flash flooding as i mentioned it's just more maybe these storms could also have you know some severe weather some um you know damaging winds lightning hail that's all a very good possibility this time of the year is when a lot of the uh, plants, so the corn plants especially, across the corn belt, you know, Iowa, Minnesota are pretty much at their peak, you're growing, they're actually kind of nearing their, their end, but they are delivering a lot of transpiration, basically kind of like plants sweat, um, right, so they're releasing a lot of water into the atmosphere through that, and I bring that up because sometimes a lot of these storms can start off pretty weak, and then because of kind of the supplied moisture from these plants, there could actually be these prolonged storms that just continue to roll and roll, and they're very hard to predict, and what I'm trying to reference here is precisely the August 2020 derecho <clears throat> that happened across Iowa. You know, the day before, there was obviously a slight chance risk for severe thunderstorms, <clears throat> but um, within a few hours, uh, that thing uh, developed, the thunderstorm, and it kept growing and growing, and it kept speeding, getting faster and faster, and uh, in the analysis that the National Weather Service conducted, they... they um, they uh, found that the transpiration caused by the corn plants actually played a significant role in keeping the system healthy and going further, way further, and got way stronger than anyone really expected. That was a, one of the, I think, the costliest storm system, or thunderstorm system, across the United States ever recorded in history. And the day before, if you were to look at the forecast, you would have never, ever guessed that. So that's kind of the lesson that, that's to take away from that. This is a her model. It goes up to 48 hours, so this isn't going to encompass the system I want to show you. But it does show a few chances of showers and storms nonetheless, especially across Michigan and Wisconsin and the UP and Minnesota today and into tomorrow. Um, so that's something to watch for, as well as into Ohio, or, uh, potentially into Pennsylvania, maybe portions of the Northeast as well. We'll have to see. And then you can see towards 
the very end, we start seeing that system right there. But again, that's still into kind of like a baby stages. And um, at that point, the her model doesn't go out further. We can take a look at the NAM 12KM, which goes out a bit further. Another pretty decent short range. Again, there's that system. A bit further to the north than what the other models show. Still a lot of um, thunderstorm chance is still developing and we still do get that cold front um, late Wednesday into Thursday A lot of these areas here will be after a very very hot day so, and the heat, you know heat levels will be very um, Very uh, sh strong. I mean uh, high in terms of the high temperatures But I wanted to say the humidity will be also high So the heat indexes will be very uh, sufficient if you will for this thunderstorm development And again, you can see that cold front really takes its little time and that's definitely kind of what I'm uh, a bit concerned about so the National Weather Service, again, um, you know, a lot. This catches the eye: the red flag warnings, the heat advisories, extreme heat uh, warnings. That is obviously a concern. But if you were to take a look at, for example, um, well, let's take a look at the look, uh, Twin Cities office and notice that they do have threats today. Um, that that's definitely something to note. But also, you look uh, three days out, and they do start showing um, the threat for that storm system. You can see Wednesday <clears throat> thunderstorms are possible Tuesday night, but Wednesday. Um, and then clearing up as the system pushes east. Uh, I looked at the Storm Prediction Center, still no uh, mention of any um, real, uh, I guess, uh, they didn't highlight any risks yet for that storm system, though I do assume there will be at least a slight issue, if not probably an enhance for one of these days. As the system, I mean, especially that cold front, it looks really powerful and extensive. I mean, it could extend really from New Mexico here, so the monsoons kind of add to that into maybe in the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, through Kansas, into Kansas City, uh, you know, into Illinois, Chicago, Detroit, Michigan, southern Wisconsin, and up right way into Canada, and Detroit, um, Toronto, especially uh, further west. And uh, that's definitely something to to be watched for. And notice that later on these storms continue. So an active, I guess, an active, more active pattern, but with a lot of heat. So you know this rain definitely will be will be good. I mean, some of these anomalies are going to be forming here. Look at that. Look at that temperature right there. That that is incredibly hot. So that, you know that that precipitation will definitely be uh, needed. All right, that's basically it, guys, for today's video. Though, um, that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, actually, I'm curious. Maybe I can show you the NAM 3K. I want to see how far up out it goes. I know it goes out to 60. Hopefully, it encompasses a little bit of that system. I'm assuming it's going to be like the NAM um, 12K, which kind of showed it yeah, further towards the north a bit. And it still started showing <clears throat> some signs of development, though, or like Tuesday into Wednesday. I mean, you could see that the GFS at this time showed the system being a bit more aggressive. And um, next, uh, I could also show you the Canadian high res. You can see this one's more like the GFS. Um, definitely shows uh, quite a bit of thunderstorm complexes, and eventually it does show that pooling of that moisture amongst that heat and potentially that cold front developing into a uh, pretty nasty front. I mean, again, I'm concerned about this because, look, as it develops, this cold front, hopefully you notice that motion. Look, so wherever it does develop again, it's still a bit uncertain. It will be late Wednesday um, afternoon. Notice that the thunderstorms that do end up exploding stay across uh, similar areas for a good while. And then this front doesn't really move to the south. It kind of starts dragging just to the north. Uh, along this long boundary so that definitely could be something to watch for with the torrential downpours so that's often a threat that occurs just a, a flooding threat especially um august i know for me uh, in my area in chicago it, august is the wettest month of the year so that's that um thank you guys so much for watching that's basically it that's all i wanted to show you i'll catch you all in the next episode see ya bye